Hello, so in this tutorial what we're going to do is we're going to add a, a car to our scene to allow us to create a, a shadow. So I'm um, just going to go and press, uh, so I'm just going to use tab, type in card, okay, I just want a normal card, not a 3D card, just a normal card, okay. Now again, I'm just going to go and create a, um, sorry, create a second viewer so I can kind of see where this card, in fact I don't really need to do that, what I'm going to do is go into our 3D view, so I've got a card, I want to connect that to our scene, okay, I'm just going to go into our 3D view here, okay, um, so what I'm going to do is just rotate this card, so here's our card here, I'm going to rotate it along this axis here, Okay, the X axis by 90 degrees. So that should go flat now. And you can see it's gone flat and it's actually just gone on the ground for us. So, it's, so that's perfect for collecting the shadow in, in our scene now. Okay, excellent. So that's just what we want. Um, okay, now what I want to do is um, I'm going to attach to this card a... Um, uh, a fill material, okay, so this fill material means that all I want to do is I, I don't want the card to be visible in the scene, I just want it to capture the shadow, so the moment we can see it in the scene, so what I'm going to do is attach a fill material to it, fill mat, okay, and hopefully uh, and then I'm going to attach a fong to it to our fill mat. Hang on, let's just do this the correct way around. Here we are. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So let me just explain what the fill mat's doing. What the fill mat's actually doing is it's kind of saying to this that we don't want to render this out and it's do and it's doing that we don't want to render out the card itself it's doing that by actually not adding this card to the alpha channel so uh, let me just rearrange things a little bit just to demonstrate so if I just connect this fong directly to the card here and I've got the scan line renderer here connected up to our viewer and if I just look at the alpha channel now you can see that this is in our you can see that the, this card is filling up our alpha channel okay um, now if I disconnect this fong and put the fill mat in between it and then connect the fong to that you'll see that we do have the card in our scene uh, and while it is visible in our normal RGB mode yeah okay uh, the actual alpha layer that's been generated by this scene, okay, uh, actually will actually mask this out. It's not included in the alpha, okay. Um, so what that means is I can actually, if I use, so rather than, um, so rather than actually adding this as a background, so rather than adding, let me just come back to our RGB now, so rather than adding this uh, undistorted footage of this background of this uh, uh, the undistorted version of our footage as a background to this scan re renderer okay which is going to give us this view what we could do is actually just use a merge layer so I'm just going to just remove this background layer there okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a merge node okay in fact I might just go M for merge here okay um, and it's a merge over Let's have a look here and sorry for it being so such a small area. In fact, if I press space, we can see more. If you press space on it, you can zoom up the whole thing. So that's actually probably going to be more useful to work that way. If I connect uh, the undistorted to our merge here, I'm just going to move the merge back down here now so we can see what we're doing. Okay, you'll see that that alpha mat is now being used, can you see, to actually um, uh, take out the, uh, uh, to, to, to actually take out that card, okay? So basically, rather than just adding as a background here, we need to actually use a merge node to bring our background in using this method, okay? Uh, that's superb. Now, I'm hoping 
that's fine. Um, so what you may have noticed is our chair is basically moved in our scene and what's happening here is that um, the scanline renderer, the renderer doesn't know uh, what size to render the um, uh, what size to actually uh, render out at okay uh, so it's getting a bit confused by that um, what I've found helps is if we just connect the uh, background node uh, this background node of the scanline renderer back to the undistorted one okay uh, then uh, the chair goes back into the right place. So this, by having this background here, it knows what size to render our scene out at. It might be that we could actually just hard code that into uh, one of our settings in here. I'm still haven't managed to find that in there, uh, but we might be able to just yeah render that out using that. But that seemed to fix the problem anyway. So um, yeah, you want to feed the background into here just so that the scanline renderer knows what resolution to render out so that then it all fits when we merge it together here. Okay, so we've got our spotlight, we've got our card in. Now we, we, what we want to do is we want it, we want it to actually create a, um, a, a shadow, okay? So we do want this spotlight here to actually cast a shadow. So I go into shadows. I want it to cast a shadow, okay? And you can see it's casting a shadow here. And then what we want it to do is capture that shadow on our card. And what we're going to do is we're going to do that by actually outputting the shadow into a different layer. So I'm just going to go, uh, if I'm going to click on here and I'm going to go new, okay? And I'll create a layer called um, spotlight dot shadow, okay? Click OK. So I've created this new spotlight shadow layer here, okay? And um, uh, and you should be able to see this if we go into. So I'm just going to view our output now. Uh, and if I go now into here, you can see other layers, uh, spotlight, and you can see there's a spotlight layer there. And if I look at the alpha for that layer, here we go. Uh, I was hoping we would find it. So at the moment, um, if I go to my um, channel here, yeah, if I go to my channel, uh, so if I go to my scanline renderer, okay, uh, and I look at the output of the scanline renderer, and I'm looking at the spotlight channel, uh, spotlight. Um, uh, uh, I'll just go RGB. There we go. I'm just looking at my spotlight channel that I've created. That's that's the channel to which this shadow on this card is being rendered to. That comes out of here. But if I go to my merge node, you'll notice that it doesn't come through. And the reason for that is I need on my merge node, I need to go also merge, okay, and just basically select my spotlight shadow and just say I also want to merge this spotlight ch shadow channel as well, okay. Um, typically what you want to do is, um, uh, and then now that's available, then what I want to do is in order to um, make, actually use this shadow channel to, to add a shadow, what I'm going to do is use the grade tool, okay? So I'm going to go back into my normal RGB view here, and I'm going to use the grade tool, and then what I'm going to do is just use the um, spotlight shadow as a mask, and literally, I can literally start, I can literally just grade the area where the shadow is. So I can kind of drop the gain, okay, and effectively kind of create sort of a drop shadow in that sort of area if I want to, okay. Um, obviously, in theory, this should be dropping a shadow kind of on the chair, and that might sort of deform the shadow a little bit, and maybe we could add some geometry to kind of help do that if we wanted to, and uh, take this a little, comp a little bit further. Uh, a typical thing, I'm not going to do that now though, but a typical thing we could do is add a blur to this and then just simply blur the, so what we want to do is, is um, uh, in fact actually what I want to do is put the blur in, if I just go control Z, I want to put the blur in before the grade and what we're going to do is just blur the shadow, the spotlight channel, okay, and then just add, here we go, you can see, add quite a bit of blur to that 
okay so we can add blur to that as well uh, and then what we've got is a drop shadow in our scene okay that we can then control and refine okay so that's basically adding a uh, lights uh, sorry adding a drop shadow to our scene uh, what we've done is we've created a card used a fill material uh, and then what we've done is basically put that that, that drop shadow uh, and then we've rendered that we've rendered that shadow or we're rendering the shadow being cast by the spotlight to a different channel this channel here and then what we're doing is taking that uh, taking that channel and, and blurring it and then grading based on that channel okay so in the next tutorial what we'll do is just add some grade nodes in here just to allow us to grade the chair and kind of fit it into the scene a bit better